here's an oddity. It's a string of festoon lamps. And you think it just looks like standard lamps until you realise that it's got a USB connector on it. And this is actually powered from a 5 volt supply. And if you unscrew the lamps, because you can in this instance, then they do have standard E27 bases, but they are designed for low voltage use. It's also worth mentioning that the globe of the lamp is plastic, but the actual support inside is glass. That's weird. We'll take one of these lamps apart. But initially, I shall plug it into a USB power supply, and we can measure the current. There are 10 lamps in the string. I think there's 10 lamps in the string. Yes, there are 10 lamps in the string. If I plug it in here, initially it doesn't light. There's a little touch button here. If you touch the touch button, they slowly ramp up to full intensity, and the current draw is 950 milliamps. So let's say one amp about 100 milliamps per bulb. That's quite low, that's half a watt per lamp. Not sure how much of that's being dissipated across the filament. The remote control also lets you dim them down or turn them on and off and it fades up and down. That's all it really does. I don't know if there's a resistor in here, but we shall find out. First things first, let's take one of the lamps apart. So I shall select a random lamp to be destroyed. And unfortunately these are crimped. I'm just gonna put that battery pack out of the way. These are crimped in quite tightly, so I'm going to have to actually do the usual thing and peel the base off the lamp. That's okay. Uh, I shall pop the base connection off first, because that will release the wire. Let's sim down this, mainly so you can see the carnage when I have a terrible incident. So if I try and get the little rivet pin out the bottom, there it is, that's released one of the wires. Is there a resistor in there? Is there a resistor? Yes, there's a resistor. That's interesting to note. Okay, I'm going to completely destroy this lamp holder now by peeling into it because it's the only way to get off. Although this is a plastic housing, it is super well crimped in. They have an interesting tool for that, that you basically drop the lamp into it and pull the handle over and it crimps it. I have one in order from China. Hopefully it will arrive because uh, I decided to make some lamps just for fun. So let's peel this up and just see how far we get. Stay in the shot here, so you can marvel at aforementioned carnage. There is the wire coming up the side that's connected onto the housing. Oh, it's quite a thin wire. Then again, it's not really taking much current, and it's certainly not taking full mains of voltage. I wonder if it's just loose or if it's right up to the top. I didn't see it going right up to the top. I don't know if it's just basically springing against the side here. Hmm. Here's the tricky bit. I don't have to worry about the glass breaking this time. The lamp is marked 1 watt 5 volt. So let's get this out here. Oh, the last bit is just proving irksome. As sometimes they do. There we go. The base is off, revealing the plastic housing, the glass support for the filament, and it is pressed into a little plastic grip with a resistor with a value of, oh, that's a, a multi-band resistor. Hold on, let me just see if I can see this, or I'll just measure it. Uh, brown, red, black, gold. The gold is a, a divider, so uh, is that 12 ohm? I think it's 12 ohm. Yeah, I think it is 12 ohm. Let's measure that. Let's get the meter in. And we'll set it to 200 ohms. It's good that there's a resistor inside it. I did test this at 5 volts and it drew a lot more current than in the string, so I guess the wiring must be also uh, having an effect on that. 12 ohms, it is 12 ohms. Okay, that's useful to know. I can pop this back into its little housing. If my crimping tool and the bases that I've ordered come back from China, I can actually repair this. I should be able to put this lamp back together again. In the meantime, let's take a look at this. So how is this put together? Is this going to come apart easily? I shall sweep all the shards of metal off to the side before I impale myself on them. I'm going to guess that it splits around about here. It might be glued together. If it is glued together, I shall pause and take it apart in a more controlled manner, because I may have to, well, it might not be controlled. I don't think that is a separate base that comes off there. I think this is really uh, clamped on the other side of the wire there. 
Um, where is a pair of pliers? Let's squeeze it firmly and see what happens. We'll squeeze it like, oh, that, that sounded crunchy. That was crunchy. I think this is a good thing. It is kind of a uh, parting. Sorry if that's making loud poppy noises through the speaker. The microphone doesn't always have a chance to respond in time. So that is coming off. And should go back on again, look at it. What do we have? We have a little, oh, we've got a fair amount of circuitry on that. We've got the transistor to switch the output. We've got the little chip. Does it have a separate touch sensor? No, the touch sensor may be built into this chip. Right. Okay. One moment, please. I'm just going to reverse engineer this. Okay. Let's explore. So this uh, chip is marked 2201. I did not find a dimmer chip marked that, but I did find one that was identical pin-wise, and it was called the RH6616. That fits the description perfectly. The circuitry is a bit, uh, it's cheating in one area, but it is a fairly standard circuit. Things worthy on the, of noting the circuit board, lots of stability capacitors. You've got the main incoming supply as a capacitor. You've got the reduced power supply via this cheat of a resistor and a zener diode instead of a regulator. This capacitor is part of the uh, frequency, the, the touch sense circuit, I guess, might be part of an oscillator. The sense plate itself is on the other side and is a 1K resistor in series. If we look at the circuit board, we can see, oh, hold on, let me pick it up, it's very small, the large pad there that is connected to that. The only other pads on the other side are one little link from the negative to the transistor, and then this output pad is uh, replicated on the other side and coupled through with plated through holes, and that is purely for thermal dissipation from this transistor, just to boost the rating a little bit. Um... Things worthy of note about the chip. These two pins are for programming a mode. You can determine the operation of the chip. And this pin here is for programming the frequency. It can either be positive or negative, And that will determine the pulse's modulation frequency. The modes can vary between uh, the touch to dim up, touch dim down, or to step through different intensities and with memory or without. I don't know if this actually has sustained memory, though, when it's turned. I guess it, oh, it might... Uh, that's when you touch it, it tends to dim out completely. What this might be doing is it might be turning off and then it'll come up to that pre-programmed setting. Um, after that, you've got the, the uh, pull-down resistor for the MOSFET and EO90, and then the gate resistor for the MOSFET, and one little LED here that actually is mounted in the back of the board, but shines through the front of it to the touch side, just purely to mimic the output. Let me show you the schematic, notably the Zener diode. It's kind of cheating, but it's cheap. That's why they did it. Incoming 5-volt supply, that decoupling capacitor across it. Here is the cheated power supply with a 510-ohm uh, resistor and a 3.1 or 3.2-volt zener diode and a capacitor across it. What that means, unfortunately, is that because that's a simple voltage drop with current limiting, it means that uh, in standby without being on at all, this thing, instead of having a super low current consumption, is actually going to draw 4 milliamps, which is a bit naughty, but if you plug it into a plug-in wall power supply or a power bank, that's not much of an issue since it will probably just shut itself off anyway if it's a fairly decent one. The touch input plate has a 1K resistor, and that, I presume, is to limit... Uh, if someone touches it and does an electrostatic discharge, that means that the clamp diodes in here will be able to clamp that. The output has the resistor to the MOSFET and the pull-down resistor to keep MOSFET in a known off state uh, for stability. Uh, and that just pulls the output to zero volts and also lights that LED which mimics the output. Whatever intensity you've set it for, that LED will be the same level of intensity. And that is it. The most notable thing is the two mode pins. You can find a data sheet on, on this if you look up uh, RH6616. Uh, and for a PDF data sheet, but it isn't Chinese, so you'll have to use Translate app. Uh, and the other pin there is the frequency, of course, that sets the um, frequency, which is quite high. It's something like four kilohertz, I think it was. But you can actually, it, the frequency will depend on the mode. It can go very high with the, just the straight uh, multiple intensity settings, where you just choose low, medium, or high. Uh, and that is it. So the whole set is kind of interesting. The most interesting thing is these lamps and the fact that, you know, it's drawing about an amp at the 5 volts. Um, 
which is pretty good. It means that, you know, it'd be perfect using that string. You don't need this circuitry. You could get rid of this. Uh, you could just put a switch in series and you could run it off solar as well. It might be good for off-grid sort of festoon lighting. I find this quite unusual, this screw-in cap. They haven't screwed it and they've actually just crimped it into that base. And also the fact that it's got this little plug-in bit, but they've got used the actual glass standoff inside for the actual filaments probably because it was standard. And that loose squabbly wire I found trapped in the case was literally just one of the uh, filament tails coming off the glass. And the other one's got a little resistor spot welded onto it, the 12 ohm resistor. Uh, quite interesting. Quite an interesting set of lights indeed. Uh, I could find many uses for these. I like the fact the whole lot operates effectively at low voltage. It has many uses for that. So quite neat. Interesting set of lights.